And now I present to you James P. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay. We are here. Nor here, nor there. When somebody doesn't want to really listen to the facts coming out of your mouth, they'll say that's neither the here nor there. You know, when they trivialize. Depends on whether it sticks to the subject. Oh, yeah. Well, but that could be... An, avo an, avoidant, an avoidance by that comment could be that you're digressing off the subject or it, a Trump. or it can mean the cocksucker is avoiding the subject because anybody could say that, neither here nor there. Anybody can make any asinine statement. Anybody can say anything. I mean, look at Ted, look at Ted Cruz. Uh, he wants to execute doctors that perform abortions now and a southern state just made it law that uh, the, their wacko evangelical churches can now form militias so it sounds it sounds to me what does this have to do with christianity it sounds oh no Nothing. no it's a cult my friend well it's, it's a cult it sounds and you treat it like a cult, don't you? Well, it sounds like uh, uh, there's a whole hell of a lot of people that are still fighting the Civil War, number one. Number two... You see that flag over there? Them dog, them dog Dixocrats still exist, unfortunately, those, because those are the states that went for Hillary Clinton. The Dixocrats were Democrats. Yeah, well, I mean, the southern they were not states... Republicans. The southern states that uh, went immediately for Hillary Clinton, probably because her husband and her were in Little Rock, Arkansas, as they began their political endeavors, political mm -hmm. careers. Uh, Hillary Clinton is not a, na a natural born New Yorker like she's coming across as considering the New York primary is approaching, he's, she's making it sound like she's a real New Yorker. No, she resides there. She uh, uh, was a senator of New York State, but she grew up in the suburbs of Chicago. You. Bernie Sanders grew up in Brooklyn, New York. Um, and incidentally, uh, Bernie Sanders is having a town hall meeting in Harlem, New York, and, and it will be emceed by the actress uh, Rosario Dawson, the one who gave a speech, I believe, in, I think it was California, <coughs> Southern California. She introduced them. Yeah. Introduced them, and she had some nice things to say, and she looks like a nice, uh, attractive, uh, progressive young lady. And um, I think it, it w it's a very smart idea to have a town hall meeting in Harlem. Uh, in the same region where Slick Willie, old red bulbous nosed Bill Clinton, the first black president, the first, <laughs> the first black president, hey. Bubba Clinton, has his law firm. And, and when he opened up his law firm, he says, Oh, it just, it feels just like home. Oh yeah, yeah Har 25th Street. Harlem looks just like Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh -huh. You know, and uh, but le let's get back to um, the um, but uh, what the reason why I said Dixiecrats is there are people 
from the south or they could be from out west but mostly southern states that are Democrats but they they go with Hillary despite the fact that she is a corporatist and is she is not for she is not um, um, labor friendly I mean if you're if you're if you're part of the if you are one of the asses of the masses and you you have to barely make ends meet just to survive you have to work for a living and not receive a a, a, a decent uh, uh, wage uh, a living wage Hillary's not for you and that's obvious okay uh, she's not too crazy not about obvious to those idiots down south she's not too crazy about climate change she's not crazy about uh, a, a, a decent um, minimum wage she's not crazy about universal I mean real universal health care single payer She's not crazy about uh, students not having to pay off their rip-off college tuition. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. It's obvious that she, she, even though she's a Democrat, she's not progressive. Uh, she's a corporatist uh, in in some ways. Sneeze. Huh? <coughs> God bless you. In some ways, Barack Obama. Uh, did some he dabbled in some progressive things and he he did a lot he he did he he did an, a very impressive job for inheriting the gw bush dick cheney mess but barack obama is also a corporatist being that he is for the T, uh, tpp and he signed the monsanto protection act and he's uh seems to be you know supporting the re-election of uh, Deborah Wasserman Schultz down in Florida and things of things of that nature but getting back to people in the south I said Dixie Krat because there are there are some that didn't turn Republican yet so <laughs> if you're a Democrat and you're against Bernie Sanders like a certain individual on our Facebook group uh, titled uh, Uncensored uh, Hard-Hitting Truth that these are what would you call them? They're the closet Dixiecrats or closet Republicans or they're they're pretending to be Democrats but they're not true progressives. Blue dogs. They're blue dog. Blue dog. A blue dog Democrat is one that bites the hand that elects it, uh, them and uh, craps all over their progressive base just like the banner says now getting back to the tone evidently the people of Wisconsin have no problem with Bernie Sanders tone uh, uh, um, I from what I understand only like 200 people showed up for the Hillary Clinton rally and they mm -hmm. had some ridiculous fat goofball cheerleader trying to uh, trying to get the crowd going, and it didn't work. And Bernie Sanders had uh, many, many thousands mm. of people showing up, a, a huge rally. And uh, you know, a lot of states lately seem to like Bernie Sanders' tone. And when I say Bernie Sanders' tone, I simply mean that. If um, if you continue to uh, interrupt Bernie Sanders, and Bernie Sanders stands up for himself and says something about it, then uh, he automatically has a negative tone. He has a bad tone. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's where the tone came from. Uh, now the right wing uh, people are saying that the little Bernie bird that landed on the podium was trained to go to Bernie it was all staged mm. like the bird the bird knew his script <laughs> oh boy oh yeah yeah and Ted Cruz is the anointed one right whatever yeah he's anointed all right they are Hillary is obviously desperate by the things that are coming out of her mouth. 
our backs against the wall. Republicans uh, are um, in danger of uh, totally having their party go right down into the abyss because of Donald Trump, which is a blessing, actually, that Donald Trump was um, is uh, indirectly, uh, from a human standpoint, indirectly uh, sabotaging the Republican Party, but maybe a, a divine higher power is sending, sending him to punish the Republicans for ha uh, committing idolatry, idolatry and ignoring the poor. No one is being punished except the true Church of God, those who have the Holy Spirit. What about this All stuff? All of about? the rest of humanity will have their turn. What about the but suffering? But it ain't their turn now. What about the suffering of the poor? What about uh, the children? Well, what is that? That, that the doesn't children, have anything to do with God. Uh, 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 what about the idolatry of the money lovers? That's your economy. That's your, what, your what, country. What about usury through uh, the love of money? By That's the, the way you conduct your economy in your country. What does that have to do with that, God? What's a big sin, right? Uh, but what does it have to do with God? Punishing. Now. Well, didn't God uh, put together the Ten Commandments? For ancient Israel. All right, so... Not for modern man. So modern man could go on... Free to do what he so wants. So can, can create a, is right, then. That uh, 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 I don't know if he's Paul, right. Paul's Paul's letters state that we are he came for the Gentiles and we are in the dispensation of grace and uh, you know we are uh, automatically saved by the blood sacrifice. What the hell is that talking about? You don't be, don't contradict yourself. If, if I'm not contradicting you, you're bringing if, in other other subjects. I'm I hey I'm razzle dazzling you because I caught you. I I, I tripped you up, brother. The, if oh, the first buddy. commandment is thou shalt not worship any uh, graven images. Who were the commandments given to? Ancient Israel. Thank you. Who was married right. to God? Is, Who was the only right. nation? Is, idolatry, is the love of money, which is Stop. a form of idolatry, is it still a sin today? Absolutely. But then why are, talking, you, why are you contradicting me when I'm giving you... talking punishment. So you don't believe in karma. You can sin all you want. So you don't you're believe. So today. you you don't believe in karma. Karma is from from uh, reincarnation. Well, how does it, reincarnation it means, have to uh, do with God? It just means what goes around comes around. Oh really? Shit. Well, who who got punished with karma lately? And who's directing karma? Well, if it's reincarnation, it has nothing to do with I'm, God. I'm so glad, God ain't I'm, directing. I'm it. glad you brought that up because yeah. there are every time a politician in the spotlight uh, is a suspect of alleged wrongdoing, uh, a criminal activity scandal, uh, it gets plastered all over the internet. But it eventually it and becomes it becomes yesterday's news. That's and nothing right. is ever done by it. They and just that, like they use the word indictment, but nothing is done. And then that guy moves up. And that guy, and he then there's another job. one, and then another one is suspect of scandal. Zitter's and still then, in uh, politics. You know, it started out with uh, Rick Perry of Texas, then it went to Scott Walker of Wisconsin, then it went on and on, and it's now it's Hillary and Bill with this uh, 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 underground pedophile thing that they keep on talking about. And uh, what does this have to do with camera? And and it, but, but the thing Punishment. is, the thing is, they all were suspect of wrongdoing, but they avoided a what you would call indictment or punishment. But Bernard Madoff robbed from the top one percent, so they threw away the key, they locked him up because he didn't rob the little guy. The, the, the politicians, they rob the little guy, which means the middle class and the poor. So, right. see, you see how uh, there's a pattern here with, you well, know, What does that have to do with, with God and punishment? 
So what you're saying is uh, the punishment of the uh, masses is not for this time. Thank you. Why is that so hard to understand? Because you have to be fucking right every goddamn time. It's not me. I'm getting <laughs> it from where? Well, it all... Getting hey, it from where? The Bible also... Thank you. <coughs> the Bible also says... <coughs> absent from the body is present with the Lord. No, it ain't. That means something, le say that. something leaves your body. It goes somewhere. It doesn't say that. No? No. Really? Those in the flesh cannot please the Lord. Those who are in the flesh cannot inherit. Well, there's a lot of... Cannot inherit the there kingdom There are a lot of, of contradictive verses. There aren't any. In the Bible. Once you understand what the total message is. There are no yeah. contradictions. Sorry. His interpretation... No, again! ...says that. Uh, Harold Camping's interpretation, when he says a fig leaf represents the nation of Israel, how does he? Where does he get that from? He scriptures, insisted on his interpretation. Scriptures uh, are not up for personal interpretation. Well, they shouldn't be. No, they aren't, unless they are using other things and bringing in other things, like maybe the Trinity. Yeah, like uh, camping okay. used to say, a mountain means a country, a nation. It does. Why is he, how do you get that? How, how do you interpret it's that? It's symbol. Just like a woman. Well, well, how is it explained? In the Bible, what, for the church. Where is it explained that a mountain is a nation? You know, there are commentaries. Uh, yeah. You know, written about certain things in the Bible and stuff. There are commentaries. Right. You go to the commentaries, you find out what was meant to hear here. You look up the word uh, in the Hebrew, and you look it up in the Greek, and you find out what well, it means. I would say, I would, I would say that a concordance is probably a Bible. That only shows you the same verses that are on the same subject. Yeah, That's all that does. It helps you zero in on the subject. That's correct. It, it, you know. But what does that have to do with you then interpreting? Okay, you feel you feel that there Do not is feel. that that all the dastardly people that we know of today are not uh, going to be punished because they didn't say that it is not their time. It is not their time. Okay, they will all undergo a resurrection. Those particular people you're talking about in the great white throne judgment. Revelation 20. Okay, now what I disagree with... No, 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 the, you don't disagree. What I disagree with Dr. Bill is that he thinks that all of the most dastardly wicked people in the history of mankind will get a second chance. God does ha. not. Ha! Yeah, right. Jeffrey Dahmer and Adolf Hitler and God all the... God does not want the wicked to die. And the Caesars, uh, some of the bad Caesars and some of the bad popes, they're going to get a second chance. Oh, serial killers deserve a second chance. Paul was a killer. Where's the restitution for Paul all, the, killed all of the victims? Where's the restitution? There is none of that unless they do not want to do what God wants them to do. Oh, okay. Then they die the second death. Okay. For all eternity. It's very clear. Everything Don't bring in your own personal interpretation. Everything and then it makes sense. That we discuss politically is part of our series Capitalism in a Conch Shell. There's the conch shell. And uh where's the capitalism? Well, it's uh in a conch shell is like a play on words instead of saying in a nutshell in other words we we are simplifying it instead of you listening to a whole bunch of uh, college professors giving you this long lecture about you know uh, or stupid Kramer on CNBC economics and, and how oh by the way uh, uh, MSNBC uh, including Rachel Maddow they uh, at, they had a busy uh, 
day this past week I think it was Thursday I could be wrong or my, <coughs> Wednesday or Thursday where they interviewed uh, there was an interview uh, with Donald Trump by uh, was it Chris Matthews right then Rachel Maddow interviewed Hillary Clinton in the studio then uh, she interviewed Bernie Sanders who was in Wisconsin mm -hmm. so after all that they all got together. It was Rachel Maddow, that that douchebag face, uh, 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 arrogant fuck that I can't stand him when I look at him. Todd, what's what's his name? Chuck Chris, Todd. Chuck Todd, and they all summarized it like real quick. But they all went on a tirade of criticizing and bashing Bernie Sanders. No kidding. And uh, you know. Uh, Bernie Sanders uh, supposedly did not uh, feel that uh, a lot of focus should be on Donald Trump's statement uh, concerning abortion. And what uh, Bernie Sanders had said was that uh, the, the media needs to stop focusing so much on every stupid thing Donald Trump says and start talking about some of the other issues that are important to the United States and, and, and to the world, uh, climate change and other things. I think the nuclear issue is very important to the world and Mr. Trump says he will use them. Punishing by punishing women. No, that's a separate subject. Right. But that the media, with because the the but he wants to use nuclear weapons against right. ISIS. Well, what I mean, other, what I, and well, even in Europe, what Bernie meant is there are many other vital issues instead of talking all night about Trump's statement on uh, those, abortion. Those two issues show, issues showed that Trump knows not what he's talking about. Oh, yeah, it's obvious. Okay. First of all, how do you punish somebody when he does something legal? Roe versus Wade. Okay. And how do you not understand that there is a lot of collateral damage by using nukes? True. And, or carpet bombing. But that's not a nuke. Well, a nuke is worse. No shit, Sherlock! Hey, you ever he see... He doesn't understand hey, that! Hey, you ever see a B-52 dropping tonnage on a, on a town or a city and how the bombs spread out you could pretty much level a city with, 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 a, with a, uh, one or two B-52s we did Hiroshima and Nagasaki again he's getting back to the atomic bomb I'm talking about even conventional massive that's car not carpet what, bombing that's not what Trump was talking about I know Trump wants no not you know Trump you wants gotta no understand. you gotta be right all the time you're a no. punk you're no. a punk. You got to be right all no. the time. You, you, the, the older man, you get, the more arrogant you get. The man does not understand whether whether you are. Of course, when you nuke an area, it's nuked forever. Uh, la, 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 la. Yeah, I know. Like Chernobyl, it, it takes uh, thousands and thousands of years for the radiation to subside. We know all about it. No, we don't. But this you can also you also happening. get a lot of collateral damage from carpet bombing from a B-52 bomber. Big deal. This is a man who wants to be president and doesn't understand these well, things. Well, Ted Cruz is, is uh, dangerous also. No shit. Uh, we're sticking to Trump right now. I don't want to be bitching about true Cruz. Well, Cruz, is win didn't he win some primaries from Trump? Yes, he did. He's got like 300 and some delegates. And Trump has 700 and some. Okay. So. Dangerously close, but all right. But Jeez. anyway, I know about nukes. And nukes equal World War Three, And they also equal Matthew 24, where there will be no flesh left alive. No, that's true. Well, Mr. Trump doesn't understand that. And he doesn't understand that if you do something legal, there's no punishment involved. Well, yeah, well, getting, well, he's, he's stark raving mad. He's a nut. No kidding. He's a narcissistic, egomaniacal, uh, possibly a sociopath. Very possible. And those two things showed that up quite 
flagrantly this week. Well, psychologists are not too thrilled with uh, their analysis okay. of Donald Trump. Uh, uh, um, you know, but the thing is, getting back to Rachel Maddow and Todd and the rest of them, they immediately go right to the Bernie bashing and uh, they're probably... Because they're for Hillary. They're for Hillary. Maybe, maybe they're told they have to be for Hillary. Who knows? But the point of it is, you know. they don't think Bernie can win, so they gotta go with somebody that's more secure. Well, Bernie's sure getting a lot okay. of people at his rallies. All right, now getting back to... Um, they don't have the delegates. Okay? Well, he doesn't have the if, the if the DNC, if the DNC of the Democratic Party hands over the nomination to Hillary, hook or by crook, regardless of how well Bernie Sanders does, I predict a lot of trouble at the Democratic National Convention as well as the Republican Convention in Cleveland, Ohio. There, the, the pro protesters. I, I predict rioting. If, if, look, if they screw, if they blatantly screw over Bernie Sanders, don't be surprised if there's not massive rioting at both national conventions. Donald don't Trump, don't be surprised. Trump, at Trump it. called for it, huh? Trump called for it. Well, yeah, he said guns are allowed. He wants rioting. That's not good. Well, the, well, look. If he doesn't get treated fairly, the the Bernie or bust people. <laughs> add up to a lot and they are headstrong about not supporting Hillary Clinton and if they see that Hillary thanks to Wasserman Schultz has stole the nomination there might be uh, a progressive rioting too Don't we'll oh, have to see we'll have to see now I want to salute and congratulate the people of Arizona for really fighting uh, uh, I'm bringing this to court. Voter really fraud. fighting. Excuse me. Voter fraud. Thank you. Voter fraud. No other state, the people of no other state as of yet, has done this. So I feel the people of Arizona deserve a, a salute from my uh, lucky Blackthorn Shillelagh. I'm proud of you. You're fighting tooth and nail against the voter fraud and it turns out that the uh, shenanigans are taking place <laughs> with the New York State primary also. Underhanded tactics. Well, it ain't here yet. Yeah, but, the, but, but Hillary's people are pulling shenanigans. Uh -huh. People that are registered Democrats in New York State suddenly are out of the system. They mysteriously uh, are not there to legally vote. They were like, oops, you're not in the system. Mm. Ah, you're not in the system. And the New York primary is not too far away. Mm. Interesting. Interesting how patterns work. Oh, well, that, uh, um, what's her name again? I think her name is uh, Michelle Fields of Fox News. Is that her correct name? She is a, a, a like a cookie woman. Like ten, no, not not Mrs. Mrs. Fields cookies, but she has a pair of uh, other cookies. She is like a tantaro. She is a large-breasted, uh, pouty-lipped, um, young, uh, uh, succulent, uh, very sexy, and very cruel uh, conservative, a right-wing chick, right-wing chicky poo on Fox News who was ranting about how the uh, the wealthy who supposedly pay all the taxes uh, paid for Social Security and uh, and all these old people want to take money that does not belong to them. Some crap. She doesn't understand how the system works. I think she has a script in front of her whatever how could anybody not understand that social security is not an entitlement and it was bought and paid for well does she ever look at her paycheck and look at FICA because that's the money well, taken out 
to pay for her she's, social security. She seems like your typical, should I say, a Southern California, she's from LA, Southern California beauty uh, uh, with the curves in the right place. They're not the brightest bulbs on the yeah, Christmas tree. The curves tree. are not in her gray matter, in her brain. No, she's the, she's not the bright, uh, like Kim Kardashian. They're not the, or, or any other uh, good looking Fox News uh, chicky poo. They're not the brightest bulbs on the Christmas tree. At all. All right, now, let me lay a little Chisler's Hall of Shame on you. <coughs> <laughs> Chef's Cupboard. This is a uh, uh, the generic brand sold at all these supermarkets. Let me see um, the names, the company, distributed by all the incorporated. But I see this with Progresso Soups and with everybody. Chicken Corn Chowder Soup. Oi. Chunky. Oi. I don't know if you can see it. Oi. All right. You see how, how how that picture looks? Too much. Too much. Right there. See how that photo a looks? Closer. See that chunkiness? Down. See that? A little closer. See that? Eh, eh. That's about right. See how chunky that looks? See all those big pieces of chicken and the corn and the potatoes and everything? Potatoes looks pretty. Still looks like uh, pasta. No, it's but it's a cream. It's a cream. Uh, it's a creamed uh, soup. But anyway, see how great that looks? Guess what? When I opened it up and poured it out. I had to look hard to find any of these. It was, you might as well call this soup cream of cream. Chick so. You might as well call this cream chowder because I couldn't find the chicken. It was Boy. like, it was all like tiny specks of chicken, corn, and potato. Tiny specks. Shame on you. All these. What's the first ingredient? Chicken broth. Ah. Uh, corn. Dehydrated potatoes. Cooked chicken uh, meat. Wh white chicken fourth, meat. Fourth ingredient. So, if if the if what you see on the label are the first series of ingredients on this can and it is not true when you pour it out then that means that the company is lying about the uh, uh, the uh, predominance of ingredients I would say so which me which which reinforces my very strong hunch that American food companies are allowed to lie yeah, about their bingo. ingredients which is unethical, underhanded, and dishonest. But it's American business. And, and it is the right-wing conservatives that support this practice of deregulation in business and lying and lying to people. Because the corporation is more important than people. Because the profit, the profits of the corporation are more important than uh, your rights as a consumer. In other words, they're allowed to lie to you and rip you off. Yeah. And price gouge. Yeah. An industry is permitted to price gouge you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well who American do you think business? Who do you think came up with that idea? It wasn't FDR? Mm -hmm. it wasn't JFK? It wasn't uh, Dwight Eisenhower? Or it wasn't. Uh, uh, Tr Harry Truman or Teddy Roosevelt, it was the far right, and 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 nowadays no regulation people. The Republican Party has is free market be is becoming more to the right than ever before, as you can see by the lunatics that are campaigning. Okay, let us sink our teeth into these readings. Speaking of a lunatic, <laughs> in television news, a telephone in interview is typically frowned upon. Donald Trump's fondness for them is changing habits and causing consternation in newsrooms. 
Two organizations are circulating positions, excuse me, petitions, to encourage Sunday morning political shows to hang up on Trump. Some prominent holdouts like Fox's Chris Wallace refuse to do air on air phoners. Others argue that a phone interview is better than no interview at all. Except in news emergencies. Mm -hmm. Producers usually avoid phoners because television is a visual medium. A face-to-face -face discussion is preferable to a picture of an anchor listening to a disembodied voice. Face-to-face -face interviews let viewers see a candidate physically react to a tough question and think on his feet. Yeah, if you have a, if you have a, uh, a camera person present on location, you know. Well, that's what happened the other day. Mr. Trump thought on his feet and he put his feet in his mouth. Yeah, he makes statements, then he he um, retracts and... I misspoke. Maybe I misspoke. Never apologizes for anything. He just like... He apologized to his mother once, he said. Once? Yeah. Trump tends to take over phone interviews with little challenge. The idea that you would do a phone interview, not a face-to-face, or even a satellite with a presidential candidate, I'd never seen it before. And I was frankly shocked that my competitors were doing it, said Chris Wolves. Since Trump announced his candidacy in 20, June of 2015, Wallace has conducted three in-person interviews with him. Chuck Todd host of NBC's Meet the Press has done phones with Trump, but now said he's decided to stick to in-person interviews on his Sunday show. It's a much better viewer experience when it's in person, Todd said. No oh, shit. Satellite and phoners are a little harder. There's no doubt about it, but at the end of the day, you'll take something over nothing. Morning news shows do phoners most frequently. At the outset of the campaign, Trump was ratings catnip. There appear to be no network policies. Different shows on the same network have different philosophies. Since the campaign began, Trump has appeared for 29 phone interviews on the five Sunday political panel shows. According to liberal watchdog Media Matters for America. Through last Sunday, ABC's This Week has done it ten times. CBS's Face the Nation seven. And six times each on Meet the Press. None of these shows has done phoners with Ted Cruz. John Kasich, Hillary Clinton, or Bernie Sanders. The activist group Moms Rising said, the disparity sends the message that some candidates can play by different rules without consequences. And that's just un-American. Yeah, I hate that term, un-American. A study by Media Quant and the New York Times estimated that Trump has received the equivalent of 1.9 billion dollars in free advertising. Given the media attention paid to his campaign. Yeah, about, and about Trump being uh, self-funded that is not entirely true either. Hey, recently Trump had a supposed uh, fundraiser for uh, veterans, and they he, they raised uh, several million dollars, and I heard Trump took half of it. That's, pre that's pretty. That's pretty bad. 
That's underhanded. I would say so. That's pretty underhanded. And 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 and, and cruel. I mean, you know, I mean, veterans that are really destitute and um, and and disabled and all that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. he's going to help them. He's going to help them. Well, yeah. he helped them to half the cash, right? It's like it reminds me of all these, uh, all these phony scamming, large uh, fundraisers that call you and try to get you to donate, uh -huh. and, and only a few cents on a dollar goes to the worthy cause. Uh, I get them a lot on Saturdays. The calls, uh, I I just ignore the calls now. All the charities, the supposed charities, call on Saturday afternoon, and um, oh, I keep on getting an automated telephone message uh, via Washington DC from Ted Cruz hey, hey as soon as I pick it up I know what I'm gonna hear uh, a couple times it was Republican Scott Garrett of New Jersey oh, and I hung God. up as soon as he said hi this is Scott Garrett click and now I do the same thing when he when he says it says hi this is Ted Cruz it's a robocall it's not really Scott Garrett no no when I pick up the phone I go Hello there. Yeah, I do a little Ed Norton. Hello there, because I know what it is. Hey, Teddy, you lying, Ted? How you doing? Hey, Grandpa Monster had needle nose. <laughs> oh, they got a video out where his nose, you know, Pinocchio grows around his neck. Really? That's how long it is, yeah. Lion Ted. You see the one where the, the snake in the Garden of Eden had the head of Ted Cruz? Where he's like deceiving, yeah. like he's lying and deceiving. Adam and Eve, you know, like, uh, which is the type of pastor he, well, he's not a pastor, but the type of uh, counterfeit Christian he is, mm -hmm. you know, but, um, and um, uh, Bristol Palin had something stupid to say. Uh, it's amazing how people pay attention to what Bristol Palin says politically. I or mean, anything. Or ask her about yeah about any subject yeah the only thing she has an expertise in is uh getting it in is allowing those scum guppies that's it to do the brush stroke or the or the crawl swim up her uh, uh uterus what's that what's that tube they go fallopian. up fallopian fallopian tube and to uh to connect with her 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 wavo her egg I mean, uh, not using contraception Ooh, is her forte. That's against God. Not using contraception. That's not using contraception. God. Okay. She is re a receptacle of scum guppies. That's what she's an expert at. But people keep on paying attention to her comments, mm. just like her, her lush of a mother and the other stupid ass that comes out of hiding every once in a while uh michelle bachman oh, yeah. uh yeah yeah they they uh, li they listen to remember god told her to uh, you know oh yeah they got the bat phone man yeah they got the bat and all the evangelical pastors and all the insane things they say yeah. you know they listen to them and uh but they don't listen to what god says in the bible do they that he's cut himself off from them well, the uh, like you said, the the tr uh, true church uh, 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 of God, God's original true church, has always been a small flock. That's correct. Luke twelve, right. verse thirty-two. But if you want to be a big-time mega-church TV evangelist, your flock will be massive, and you will rip people off, and they will like it. They will like it. Well, people people like they will give you more money to rip they, them off they over. like the version of god that is like a genie in a bottle or a lamp or or a, or a, like a santa claus yeah genie type of god that you just talk to him and you get what you want and that's the type of god mm -hmm. that is portrayed by the uh evangelicals mm -hmm. by the uh, uh um all these but how the hell can you talk uh, to him if he's cut himself off from you see that they're not understanding what's in the Bible well no kidding how many people do oh 
Oh, that poor 15-year-old protester sprayed in the in the face with pepper Devil mace yeah. and told uh, 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 because she's protesting against Donald Trump, uh -huh. she was called a, a nigger lover yeah. as she was being sprayed in the face. Mm -hmm. And she's not even old enough to vote. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she what the hell is she doing there? Bodily attacked. No, she just wanted to protest. I mean, she, she, if she's not old enough to vote, I don't see the point yeah. in her protesting, but uh, the violence, uh, the violent people seem to be, uh, and the, the very bigoted and hateful people gravitating to Trump are all gravitating to Trump's rallies. Mm -hmm. They're all attracted to Donald Trump for some reason. Gee, I wonder, I wonder why. Continue. I am a Republican, and I will remain a registered Republican until the New Jersey primary is held. Then I will vote for Donald Trump. I mean, excuse me, against Donald Trump. Well, no wonder Chris Christie got reelected. You got, you have all these douchebag registered Republicans in New Jersey. He behaves like a teenage bully. True. But then they are all acting like a bunch of ignorant kids. Yeah. The name calling, bullying and childish behavior must stop. This is the type of man who will deal with the world's heads of state. Oh, heaven help us! Get him out of here. When hey, the primary the is over. I punch him in the face. Get him out of here. He's a protester. Get him out of here. I will change my designation because I am now ashamed to be a Republican. Well, actually, many Republicans feel this way. Um, 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 yeah. Uh, 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 John Kasich uh, said it was like the debates was like a, like an insane asylum, like a nut house. Uh, uh, um, what's his name um, from Carolina? No, South Carolina. So Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham uh, uh, admitted that this is disastrous with this camp 2016 campaign for his party. For years, the GOP has been shooting itself in the foot. And now, it has reached the breaking point. Enough is enough. They have put the proverbial noose around their own neck. A letter writer and Donald Trump supporter states we need a successful businessman like Trump to save us from the ravages of the Obama administration. Oh yeah, that's what we need. We need somebody like a, a corporate CEO to run the country because a corporation, the mentality of a corporate leader is best for America. They're going to really have our interest at heart. Now uh, you see where I'm getting with that. You know statement? that might be nice if uh, if we were a socialist country per se, because then that particular president would be making money for the country that we could use. Then, of course, for social programs and whatever. But we are not a business. The government is not a business. Or a church. Or it can be run like one. Or, or a church. Okay. The government is supposed to be owned and, and by the we the people. Oh, yeah, it was once upon and, a time. And the revenue that it raises in taxes, in, in fair taxes, taxation is supposed to go towards the we the people and the good of the country. And the good of the country, by the way, is all, also means respecting our national parks and our Native American land. But what happened was this gentleman, uh, CEO, whatever the hell he was at the time, said, what's good for General Motors is good for the country. Yes. And that's what we became. How is it good for the country if if the, if all their uh, if everything is offshore, or everything is outsourced, 
including their their uh, their mailbox. <laughs> I mean, uh, if if all the jobs stood in the United States, eh, then I could say, you know, then then I could say, if more jobs stood in in the United States, then maybe trickle down economics might work, but they're not. They're not. When Barack Obama took office, the employment rate was 7.8%. Today, it is 4.9%. I think it's much higher, than but anyway. It's 5.0 right now. It changed on Friday. This includes the not counted for, or? No. The not counted for that guy gave up? There are, I'm going to lose the lower figure. There are 94 million people who want to work, who are out of work. But the, the jobs are just not there. That is correct. Now, how can they be there if we allow them to go elsewhere? Mm -hmm. How can they be there? How can they be there? I mean, how, how is any self-respecting CEO or uh, directors of, of uh, uh, companies in the center going to pay uh, $60 an hour to an American when he can get no. away with 33 cents an hour for a Chinese? I'll let the cat out. I'll let Steve the, the cat out. The other one wants out, too. Where? Behind you. Well, you better go. Go ahead. Two for one. Two for one like today, The double mint Special. gum commercial. Uh, yeah, what was I saying? I, I digressed. The Dow Jones average was 7,849 in January 2008. Today, it is more than 17,500. Millions more Americans have health insurance yeah. than in 2008. And no American can be denied insurance due to a pre-existing medical condition, yep. as was the case but, in 2000. But there are still many... Americans that are underinsured and uninsured. I don't know how or why that is. Because the states did not do what they were supposed to. They rejected certain states. So they flat out rejected Obamacare. That's correct. And some of them even don't have a Medicaid program right here. Oh well. So they them, don't like to be giving anything to the poor. So them da them da southern and western states that are supposed to be so devotedly Christian uh, provide no help at all to their poor. Po folk. The po folk. No. So you pretty much, you starve to death. Or move. Right. Come up north. Like the blacks did after the uh, Civil War. Come up north, y'all. Well, I, I, I also want to congratulate the states of Alaska, Hawaii, Idaho, Washington, Utah uh, for, for uh, voting for Bernie Sanders. Uh, did I leave out any? Um, Michigan. Michigan primary. Uh, yes, Michigan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the, uh, the person on Fox News today said that uh, she had won Michigan. Well, well she Fox, got away with it. Fox he was not corrected. Fox likes uh, either they're stupid as a bag of rocks or uh, um, or they they like the corporatist Hillary better than the socialist Bernie. So whatever reason they said Hillary won. So Hillary did not win Michigan. Obviously Bernie did quite well. Now if Bernie's doing very well right now in Wisconsin, and I feel strongly hopefully, that hopefully. Bernie will do well in Minnesota, which is a traditional. Yeah, true well, he better do well in New York and California, yeah. Well, because those are biggies. Well, California, a lot of delegates. There. California has a lot of. Uh, uh, Bernie, uh, what do you call them? Let's Bernie, see. Bernie Bros. 
We'll see. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Well, let's see. Let's see. New York's going to be... Um, tough. Now, it's, well, it's going to be tough, but then again, uh, it's a known fact that... It shouldn't be close at people, all. People... I was told by somebody that lives in upstate New York that all the counties north of Westchester County, all the rural counties and... They can't stand Hillary Clinton. They hate her. And 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 in New York City, you have um, um, inner city people. You know, uh, um, I mean, hey, if Al Sharpton is for is for Bernie Sanders, by the way, and Mayor De Blasio, there, there might be a, a, a pretty good turnout in the city too for Bernie Sanders. Well, let's see how it goes. Yeah, maybe it's silly to look at the facts. But being a reasonable person, I would call that progress. To me, ravages are the numbers going the other way. Nonetheless, the writer says we need Trump because he turned $1 million loan into a $10 billion business. Seems to me the $200 million Trump inherited from his father's death had more to do with his current wealth than that one million dollar. You know that loan. that real estate investment, that idea came from his father. His father gave him a tip. Well, I'm sure I understand. Did. <laughs> I'm sure it did. And his father taught him how to make the deal. Hey. So you know Donald Trump uh, re received a. Uh, a huge head start. That's correct. He received a huge head start and uh, to all you uh, pull yourself up by the bootstrap conservatives, uh -huh. uh, I got news for you. Uh, historically, without a person receiving a big break in life or more than one breaks, you're not going anywhere. Thank you. Because this, because the system, the system has always been rigged for the rich. So unless you get that big it's break, capitalism, uh, the devil's it, can, it benefits those who have capital. Very simple. That's where the word capitalism comes from. If you don't have capital, that's correct. You cannot start. Das Kapital. You, you cannot start your own business, and even if you start it, you need people to help you up the hill. Up that mountain, you need the brakes. Well, what about anybody who has a company? Don't they need people to work for them? Hey, hey, if you're if you're a small company, let's say let's say you work for somebody else and you got experience and you have a profession. Let's say you decide to get a business loan and go on your own. Mm. You have to have your base. You have to have some customers mm -hmm. so you can pay your well, bills. Well, you can't have customers until you have the company. No, How you got to have, have customers. Well, this one guy I know by the name of George, he was doing computer graphics, uh, you know, making logos for companies. Uh -huh. Anyway, he worked for somebody else. Uh -huh. He lived in Hackensack. He worked for someone else. He bought a townhouse. Hold your horses. He bought a townhouse and uh, he worked for somebody else and decided to take his spare bedroom, his spare room and make it into an office Bingo. and hire a courier to deliver the work. Uh -huh. Well, guess what? He called some of his, uh, his boss's uh, clients mm -hmm. and he stole or borrowed. Uh -huh. Some of his boss's clients. So when he 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 resigned, he had he told them, "Look, I'll do it for you cheaper than what my boss does right. it." So he undercutted them, uh -huh. and lo and behold, George started making 150 grand a year, working out of his own townhouse. So the business grew. Now that is a uh, an um, I guess you would call an American dream come true. I mean, you roll out of bed and your office is in your spare bedroom and you walk, you, you stay, you could be in your underwear, you go in there, you go to work, you don't have to drive in the snow 
and w whatever and, 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 and all this crap and you got a courier to, to deliver the work beautiful but, Beautiful. but in capitalism you want to go into business or something you have to have investors they have to invest in you that's what Wall Street mm. is all about or was all about oh, you need before it became a casino yeah you you had to earn a people's trust and 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 <coughs> excuse me trust and interest in what you're doing people had to voluntarily invest you in ever you. seen a show Shark Tank I know I don't believe I will take did. a look at it once it is businessmen <laughs> who people come on the show with an idea or something to go into business and they present it to the sharks and if a shark likes it he wants it for 25 percent or 30 percent of your business you better and get, he will invest you in better you. you better get your idea or invention patented whatever because company the the, no is, there's no whatever you and your shark tank companies could steal your idea no shit. And you get nothing. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the capitalist system where you need an investor. Right. Which means you got to schmooze and polish somebody's apple and you'll have to get their approval, which I hate. Well, there you go. I don't like evaluation. That's the point. Because I'm James P. Madonna, king of the universe, of the internet. I don't get anybody's fucking evaluation. You understand? I'll body slam you right through a table, brother. No, I'll pile drive you right through a table. If you think you're gonna you're gonna give me the a okay on anything, you could take that right to the bank. Oh, All right, we're gonna go. Uh, you see, he thinks I'm joking. No, Believe I'm, me, I'm in physical. Get... I could pick up. I I'm could pick up a ton of ton of potatoes and bricks and throw right through the table. I'm thinking you'll never get an investor. That's what I'm. Uh, thinking. I'll probably end up arguing with him. Oh, I just said you will never get an investment unless with that attitude. Unless, oh no, I don't cause trouble. I just don't take any shit. Unless, remember, unless somebody's on the same page as me and That's digs where I'm coming from, but I still would pat. What if he tells you, James? I dig it. Your idea won't work, but now try this. I won't be evaluated. No, I'll no, listen. No, no, no. no, I'll listen to you. No, no, no. I'll hear you out. A person must be for change. Maybe his okay. idea of tweaking. Maybe, 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 maybe. We're See, not this, about this that. guy's got to win and be the master of all baiters. He's got to be the. He's got to be on top of the mountain. No matter what I say, he knows more. Bingo. What I'm saying is, that in his mind, in his, Bingo. his perception, his perception in the world of William J. Eisenman. Bingo. But what I'm saying is, if your idea is great, but your investor has something to offer that would tweak your idea and make it better, I think it's worth listening to the to the person. That is just what I said. But you didn't. No, say you are that you first. are a twister of words. You, you are a spin doctor. You did not say that at first. You said anything. I will not be evaluated. I mean, if somebody is no, like, no, no, is no. some hoity-toity, hey Trump, a hey, somebody hoity, don't come back and then change. And, and some hoity-toity person is looking down at me like of an evaluation. You know, that's that, a perception. Looking down their nose at you. Nobody you know? brought that into the conversation. Now, if they if they're if they're respectful, and they fairly look at your idea, and and they're really quite gentlemanly about it, I don't see any reason to cop an attitude with that person. But I'm talking but about you didn't say that. the pretentious. You didn't say that. You said you will not be listen, evaluated there's, by anybody anytime. Listen, I'll pile drive on that sucker. Listen, there are there are. Now you're new There are thing. spineless jabronis that work for MSNBC and uh, famous internet. Listen, there are politically correct, ultra-liberal Pollyannas have no backbone, but you can be assured that old James's spine is like titanium. 
But the ultra liberals won't admit it because they're jealous they can't be like Jay's Prima Donna. And you could take that to the fucking bank. What we're, the hell did that have and to do with it? It has to do with everything because I said so. Yeah, anyway, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna go to lunch now. God I need all it. these pencil neck geeks out there. Jesus. Karen. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the real hard-hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye-bye. Okay, we're back. Thank you very much, William Hamilton Morrow III, for doing promo. And... Ah, <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, because that's the gentleman you heard before. I, uh, I did not f completely finish my lunch because I made a large one. So if you see me chewing on something, it's just me finishing it. Go ahead. Talk to uh, that, uh, Bill. The number of Americans who say they pray or believe in God has hit a low since at least the early 1970s. However, non-religious people are twice as likely today to believe in an afterlife as those in the 1980s, which analyzes this study does responses to four decades of data compiled in the University of Chicago's General Social Survey. It's an indication that people believe they don't have to do all the work. They don't have to pray and go to church, but they will still enjoy all the benefits of an afterlife. Well, you, you know, that's a tough question. Senior citizens tend to be the most religious and show the smallest shifts in habits over time. Yeah, because they're closer to death. The study found larger religious declines among whites than blacks and larger declines in the West and the Northeast than the South. Sherman conducted the study 
with researchers at San Diego State University and Case Western Reserve University in Cleveland. The data used comes from polls of 58,893 respondents to the General Social Survey. The more down and out you are, the more you seek out the Lord. That's why you have all these, you know, the, the po folk down south and minorities being closer to the church and white people in the north being farther away from praying than seniors. See, the more, the, the more in, a, in, 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 in a quagmire you are, the more you seek out God. The results were published in Sage Open, an academic journal. The findings show that from the early 1980s to 2014, those who identified their religion as none increased from 7% to 21%. Those who never attend religious services doubled to 26%. Those who say they never pray rose from 3% to 15%. Maybe they're too damn tired to go to church because of the long hours they have to work just to pay their bills in a stinking country. Maybe every church is not the same. No, no. So no. going to a church means nothing. If it's the wrong church. When I used to go to Catholic church, everybody would like um, people from the neighborhood. They would go, all dressed up. They go through the motions. When the, when the priest says uh, "peace be with you," and you turn around, you shake the hand of the person next to you, "peace be with you," and that's it. And they go home. Boom. There was no fellowship. Nobody tried to get to know anybody. And when they went home, they slammed the door. And nobody talked to you on my on my block. It was you know it was like okay. They just go through the motions every week. Those who say they don't believe in God rose from thirteen percent to twenty two percent. Those who believe in an afterlife stayed flat at seventy nine percent. But non-churchgoers who believe in an afterlife increased from 7% to 15%. Mm -hmm. The study's conclusions are similar to ones in a survey released last fall by the Pew Research Center. The researchers did not break down results by Hispanic or immigrant populations. Mm -hmm. But their findings are particularly stark among those under 30 years of age, with nearly a third saying they are not religious, up from 12% of young people in the 1980s. The large declines in religious practice among young adults are also further evidence that millennials are the least religious generation in memory and possibly in American history. Well, that's why they, they, don't, they only care about partying. Of course they're not going to be as religious, plus they see the condition of our society getting worse and worse and, and our government, they, ju they just lose hope lose faith. You know, thinking about this, uh, the article you just read, I mean, if a person grew up in another culture with another religion and they, they, they were never introduced to Christianity, but that person had a very good heart, was a very good person, let's say they were, they grew up in a Buddhist family, and they were very good, a very good person. I mean, in all ways, I can't see 
that individual being damned. In All the, have sinned. In the afterlife. All have sinned. So you, and you are I, are eligible for death. So you, you unless <laughs> they have accepted Jesus's sacrifice. So you, that you pays you, for their sin. Yeah, you tend to think that no, a me. naturally sweet, nice, all-round great person is equal in the eyes of God to a a wicked, corrupt scamming scoundrel god is creating a family he's reproducing himself he wants all to be saved all but there will be some that will be incorrigible and they will not be saved and they, and they be will die in the last death the eternal flame Lake okay. of Fire, yeah. The Lake of Fire. So they will be smited. So it's up to them to make that choice, not up to God. God, as I said, does not wish any to perish. Not the wicked, not the good, none. He wants his family to increase. That's why there's such a thing as a universe out there. He has plans. Big plans. Well, if you want to think about it deeply, uh, the wicked person might have grown up with very wicked parents. Very wacky, uh, uh, mental case, uh, dysfunctional parents. And they, this child did not ever know what is what is a normal loving family they never experienced that and that's why he will be resurrected in a human form and given his hundred years to know God yeah. and then to make his choice I mean I watch uh, I watch this show uh, crime watch daily and it's a fantastic show it's a up for an Emmy I think um, but anyway, you know, you see cases where a young, beautiful female dies young, either murdered or whatever, mm -hmm. or by auto accident. And, you know, they're taken out young. Um, very pretty, too, this particular girl. And it's sad. Or a child taken out young. You know, it's, it's really... Um, it's bizarre. It's 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 unfortunate, also that uh, a person never experienced what life has to offer you, and they were taken out young. But she will. I just said it. She will be given her hundred years. Well, what bothers me is the perpetrator is going to be given a chance too. I don't think that's too. To, uh, well, that's because you do not think like God. I, I, I think they should be uh, severely. That's what the Bible says. Severely punished. We do not know God's mind. We do not think like God. We are. We are. We we are interested in ourselves. No, I'm thinking about the victims. We don't care about others. I care about the victims. The the, the getting payback, restitution. Yeah, victims. but that's not. That's not what God cares about. I just explained so people, the whole situation. So people getting bumped off is really not a big, horrible deal to God. God has the power over life and death. He doesn't brood like you seem to be brooding over someone's death. Well, so a young person who might have died suffering. An innocent individual that was victimized. Right, but in the yeah. in his resurrection, he will have a hundred years and a, a, a body that is free of all afflictions. Well, the world tomorrow would be the ideal. Well, that's for, what it's going to be for a thousand years. For 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 all. So anyway, but uh, th there's a resurrection after that. A big one. A huge one. Oh, you mean to tell me the great 
the white th throne. So, so the people. thousand years, the thousand year rule is is only going to contain the people the that survivors are survivors from the great tribulation, the survivors of the tribulation, and the one hundred and forty four thousand elect. They will be at Jerusalem. Right. You know what I mean? They will be at Jerusalem yeah. ruling with Jesus. I saw. They will be ruling. They will sit on the same throne. King David will be there. You know that. Uh, oh yeah, the guy that Abraham, who, the guy who, Jacob, who was uh, Isaac, the guy who had Bathsheba's husband murdered. Yeah, yeah, and then he, he God still liked him. He repented. No. When you repent, you are no longer responsible for that. Crime. You, you, you have this friend who uh, praises the letters of Paul, Paul, etc. Paul was a murderer, a murderer of Christians when he was Saul. But he will rise in the first resurrection because he's already qualified. That's a but according to you, he should be punished. Well, to be ma made He's to a murderer. To be made to suffer like you made the Christians suffer, where you See? put to death. See? Well, the Christians suffered. Why did, why did they have to suffer? But anyway. he wanted them to. <laughs> he wanted them to suffer. <laughs> That's not the point. The point is, he uh -oh. repented. I saw a great documentary on the Travel Channel last night about um, in search of Sodom and Gomorrah by the Dead Sea, and they they showed the Dead Sea has shrunk, and all the these the you know you can just pick up the salt with your hand you know well uh, that's true piles of salt and the Dead Sea they haven't had the rainfall to keep the Dead Sea at its normal level. And they found pottery. You know, they're they're archaeologists, and they're they're finding uh, things. They're trying to find evidence of a cataclysmic disaster of a lost city, like ash and uh, things of that nature. It was fascinating, you know. Uh, but anyway, you already know big pharmaceutical companies are ripping you off by charging too much for some of their medicines price gouged. But did you know they are also hurting you by dodging their fair share of taxes? Oh, I, I wish all the teabaggers would know that. A new report shows how one company pulls off this double whammy and how there's still time to prevent its biggest tax dodge, tax dodge ever. Pfizer makes Lipitor Lyrica, Viagra, I thought it was Merck, and many other prescription drugs, it wants to turn its back on America. Of course. By claiming to be Irish company through an offshore merger, giving it access to Ireland's low tax rates. Did they change their name to O Pfizer or Mick Pfizer? The change would only be on paper. The company would still be run from the United States, enjoying all the benefits of being based in America, such as our taxpayer-supported roads, public colleges, patent protections, without paying its part to support them. Now, do you see how, how miserably, obsessively greedy the top 1% is? That, that, and you already know the astronomical profits that Big Pharma makes. Now Big Pharma is goes through all that trouble not to pay any taxes. How much fucking money does a company or a person need to make? To, as to much be as the Congress will allow. And there, and there, as much as the Congress are paid off to allow. No kidding. I believe that's called corruption. 
Okay. It seems to be. A, it seems to be uh, becoming. But the, that's the American way. It seems to be becoming the norm uh, nowadays, since you have the Republicans in charge of the House and the Senate. You know, I mean, look at look at the media. They prove the media is is always lying to you, but the idiots still watch it, mainstream media, and believe it. In fact. The report from Americans for Tax Fairness found that Pfizer could walk out on its existing U.S. tax bill of up to $35 billion if its Irish tax maneuver goes forward. With my Blackthorn Irish Shillelagh, shame on you Pfizer Pharmaceuticals. Chisler's Hall of Shame inductee. That's what it already owes the American people on about $150 billion in profits it has stashed offshore, much of it in tax havens. <clears throat> what could we do with $35 billion? How about sending 5 million students to community college? or making sure seven million homes have enough heat over the winter. Or funding the National Cancer Institute for almost seven years. No, I would not do that. When corporations dodge their taxes, the rest of us have to make up for what's missing. Hey, the middle class have all the burden Thanks to Ronald Reagan. We pay for it in higher taxes. Underfunded public services or more debt. In New Jersey, this tax dodging scheme is especially offensive. Allergan, the now Ireland-based corporation with which Pfizer is combining, was a Garden State company until its merger with Dublin-based activists last March. It's all just one big accounting shell game to avoid paying U.S. taxes. And as long as you have Republicans in charge, this will get worse. While Allergan <laughs> activist is now officially Irish, the corporation's administrative world headquarters is still in Parsippany, New Jersey. Oh, it's like a Twilight Zone episode. We also pay big time at the prescription counter. The ATF report revealed that Pfizer routinely boosted its drug prices by ten times the rate of inflation in recent years. Folks in the Medicare drug program saw the price of seven leading drugs for elderly people spike at 23 times the rate of inflation between 2013 and 2015. The price of the cholesterol-lowering drug Lipitor went up 40%. Adding insult to injury? Pfizer charges just a fraction of these prices in the nation it hopes to call its official home. Ireland, a tax haven. Over there you'd pay the equivalent of about a dime, a dose, for the estrogen treatment Premarin. Here, it would cost you four bucks. Since Pfizer wants to pay Irish tax rates without actually moving to Ireland, why can't American consumers pay Irish drug prices without crossing the Atlantic? Yeah. Or Canadian drug prices, or Mexican drug prices. I know the answer to that question. Because the Congress doesn't make it the law! Because the Congress, the demons of the Republican Congress, just keep on thinking of more ways to torture, to torment, 
and to fuck up the ass with no lubrication mainstream America the asses of the masses they have have waged war against the poor the answer of course is that Pfizer gets rich exploiting US patients and taxpayers the company's profit margin was last year up 50 percent over its margin of five years ago a sizable portion of its domestic revenues came from sales to the US government a billion dollars a year in federal contracts that's right Pfizer is not paying us the taxes we're due but we are paying Pfizer we're also subsidizing huge pay packages for the company's CEO and other executives talk about parasitic thanks to a perverse tax loophole the more Pfizer pays its top brass, the less it pays in taxes. Hmm. Did you get that? Now well, what is that I keep reminding people of? When they keep saying stuff like, We can't afford $15 an hour minimum wage! Companies will go broke! Well, what the, do I keep reminding them? It's tax deductible. Correct. The cost of labor is tax deductible. I, I, I posted a banner on our uh, face Facebook page of uh, progressive discussions of the uh, CEO of Dunkin Donuts complaining that uh, $15 an hour is outrageous meanwhile he's receiving almost $5,000 per hour and his are tax deductible as the so senior. why his and not the little guy you see just how miserable All wages miserable of human beings like uh, corporate American CEOs really are yeah they're worse I mean they start the bribing of politicians they initiate it you know they send the lobbyists I hate them more than the politicians that take the bribe I mean you uh, I mean you don't have to meet with them well yeah Jesse Ventura says you don't well, have to meet why with don't them. he meet with them because they know money's coming their way uh, me, me, me. I, I, I. So you have a you have double guilt. Luckily, President Obama can stop Pfizer's biggest cash grab, that estimated thirty-five billion in unpaid taxes it wants to pocket by changing its mailing address. There are already Treasury Department rules in place to prevent this kind of overseas tax dodge. As now written, however, they would not apply to Pfizer's cleverly crafted deal. The Obama administration needs to correct those regulations those, so they cover all American companies trying to exploit the loophole Pfizer is using. Yeah, the Obama administra administration needs to correct, needs to. It took almost eight years to do something like this and it was never done, right? Okay. It, it already has the authority to do it. But the president has to act quickly. Pfizer's merger will be completed sometime this spring. And there's a similar deal right behind it. Electronics manufacturer Johnson Controls. Save by the U.S. taxpayer through the auto bailout has found its own Irish partner and hopes to claim the taxes it oh. owes on billions of dollars in profits offshore. Never mind sure me, me Never mind me taxes. Where is me lucky charms? <laughs> and all I cares about is me lucky charms. Me gold, me gold. Where's me gold? You know the blue dog you might as well say that the the Democratic Party of the two-party system uh, are consists of all blue dog Democrats 
Bernie Sanders is really a progressive independent that had to run as a Democrat just to get face time in the media. But the, but forget about it. They're, it's corrupt. Uh, if only the average American can see all these facts. Congress should outlaw these unpatriotic corporate tax dodges. There are bills in both the House and the Senate that would do it. But corporate lobbyists and their friends in Congress have bottled them up. Oh, you know, corporate lobbyists can be told to um, uh, don't let the door way out. You know, by like, who? By people in Washington. Which people? The, the Congress. Which and people the Cong have the guts, the intestinal fortitude to do that? Name one. Right now? None. There's one on the presidential campaign. Oh, there is it. one. There's one? Yeah. Yeah. Sanders. That's correct. Bernie Sanders. That's that. That's the, it. The rest of them? No. They're all guilty. That's why this November we need to uh, have a high voter turnout and uh, a, a, a win back. Uh, as many uh, Democratic congressional seats You're probably as gonna, it won't work in the House it will probably help in the Senate possible you, the yeah, House but there's, is but gerrymandered there's a lot of, but there's a lot of a lot of seats up for uh, yeah for but they're gerrymandered in why are they you allow can't get around them why are they allowing this because the party in power gets the gerrymand every time so so the even though people will be voting for whoever they want to vote for uh, the what you're telling me is that the uh, the Congress is being is allowed to cheat no they have divvied up the land area so that Scott Garrett for instance is only in a Republican area well, he has no other people to talk to. Well, Scott Garrett lives up in the boonies of Sussex County, New Jersey, up My in the corner. My point being, they are gerrymandered to a safe district. There's hardly any competition. So they're not going to lose. The Republicans. In the Senate, it is a different story. In the meantime, the president can act alone to save the American people from Pfizer's ultimate ripoff. Well, almost eight years have gone by and he hasn't done it. And and he also What would make him move now? He also Dynamite signed Dynamite under his ass? He also signed the, the Monsanto Protection Act. Why does Monsanto need protection? It is we, the people, that need protection from Monsanto. Yeah. Or the TTP, TPP, the TPP. Um, eh, anyway, eh, you have uh, one of those... Uh, a later, i got to get this one done. Light here. whimsicle. All right, go ahead. In a move catapulting California into uncharted national territory, Governor Jerry Brown announced on Monday a six-year plan to boost the statewide minimum wage to $15 an hour. Promising. Ah, the moonbeam is coming back. Promising that millions of low-wage workers would receive the help they desperately need. Jerry Brown, da 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 da, Jerry Brown. It's a matter of d economic justice. He's a clown. It makes sense, Brown said. Of the agreement? Of course it does. Would reinforce California's position as having the highest minimum wage of any state. Why the fuck did he allow Nestle to bottle aquifers during a drought is beyond me. Eh, anyway. Oh, wait a second. Is it California or, or some Midwestern state? Saudi Arabia has has purchased land and is taking out the water. 
Saudi Arabia, the country that likes to behead people for any silly reason, is but has buys our military equipment, my friend, and we have an agreement with them to protect them against their rowdy neighbors. Yeah, their rowdy neighbors are probably the good guys. Well, they are. The Shiites are different, that's for sure. The Shiites. Saudis are, are Sunnis. The Saudis are Sunnis like Saddam Hussein, and they're... Saddam they're, Hussein was not... Yeah, he was a Sunni. I don't believe so. I don't believe no, he no, was. He was. He was, uh, what do you call it, at all. Mr. Saddam Hussein was a... What do you call him? He was not either. A caliph? A caliphate? He was not either. He was not into that religion, per se, whatever. Well, maybe, maybe his parents were Sunnis. Maybe they were Sooners. They'd Sooner something. Than yeah. Something well, else. the Sunnis, um, the the Shiites are more um, non-offensive uh, or non-militant. They're more. They're more closer to the the way the Quran is supposed to be followed. The agreement would reinforce California's position. As having, it also is expected to cancel two separate labor-sponsored efforts at placing a wage hike initiative on the November ballot. The plan, due to be ratified by the legislature before the end of the week, would raise the statewide minimum wage by 50 cents. On January 1, to $10.50 an hour. From there, it would rise to $11 in 2018, and subsequent dollar-a-year increases ending at $15, January 1, 2022. Yeah, and how high would the cost of living be at that time? Oh, much, 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 much high. Much high. So, what, what, what would probably, that, what would probably mean and this situation is that the fifteen dollars an hour will become in value. It will be like the seven dollars and twenty-five cents an hour now. <laughs> like the seven twenty-five is now. Big fucking whoop de doo. As 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 uh, Archie Bunker used to say, whoop de doo. Oh gosh. Uh, I am struggling <sighs> about whether I should stay with my husband. We have two young children and have been together for 17 years. We are married for 14. He just got fired from his ninth job in 17 years. Some he left, one he got laid off from, three he got fired from. It usually takes him a while to get another job. He works around the house during his unemployment times, however. Most of the housework falls to me. I have been working steadily for 20 years. The bigger problem which now has come to the forefront is our sex life. Well, he really, if he's, if he's home that often, he really should help his wife out. As far as uh, 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 Connecting uh, uh, a happy marriage or, or real love to income, I, I disagree. It should not never be materialism. Real love should never be that. He has never been very amorous, and now is even less so. Maybe she she makes him feel bad. She makes him feel guilty, so he he doesn't have the amorous desire. He blames me for his low sex drive. He says I don't dress slutty enough. Oh, that's his excuse? Or he says there are dishes in his sink. Or the house doesn't look good enough. Which contributes to his downward drive. Well, if he's home all the time, can't he wash the dishes? The jabroni? I'm not sure I would like to live the rest of my life with someone who clearly doesn't want to be with me. 
However, there are two children, ages two and ten, in the picture. He's an asshole. Who adore their father. He's an asshole. He's home. He's got. He's home. He's got quality time in the house. He should help her out. He, why? She. She. She's the one that's working, and he expects her to clear the dishes uh, every day in a sink. And and he's home. Amy Dickinson says. Ay ay ay. From your description of your husband's inconsistent work record and behavior at home. It sounds as if he may have a number of undetermined issues getting in his way. He could be depressed, suffer from anxiety, have a hormone imbalance, mm -hmm. or have ADHD. Yeah. Is he willing to talk about this? See a physician? For a thorough screening and or see a counselor with you? I agree. Is he feeling overwhelmed or fearful of having more children? More children? Does he want to be married? He doesn't have a pot to piss in. All are questions he should try to answer. Mm -hmm. I agree with you that a lifetime of this would be very hard to bear. But neither you nor your husband seems to have started the process of trying to save this marriage. Before deciding to part, you will need to balance the needs of you and your children. Examine your own motivations and figure out if you can afford to support two households. Children who adore their parents can continue to adore them through divorce if both parents part peacefully and are cooperative and loving. Well, I really hate to see our lousy economy break up marriages and relationships. It's, it's sad, you know, and if there's children involved, it's sad also. Uh, but, I, but as far as the, his job re history goes, Believe me, there are many employers that should be in the direct path of a meteor shower. I have wished death on many <laughs> former supervisors, or should I say stupidvisors, that I have had. I think one time I gave one guy the evil eye and then I heard his whole hand uh, was lacerated wide open in an accident right to the bone. I gave him the malakia. You know what the Bible says? What? You're supposed to love your enemies. I Do hate good it. unto those who yeah, but do he, good, he, but bad he, to he you. He put so much undue stress on me that I, I went home hating his guts. I used to have stomach pain and headaches. I hated his stinking... I was just going to say that. I hated his stinking... When you hate, it eats you up. Yeah, I, mean, I had rage. Yes. Rage. So you do not do that. If you love your enemy and yeah. you do good to him, he, he was one of those evil people. To you. He was one of those people that no matter how hard you tried, and he always find fault in in everybody's work. Nothing was good. Nothing was ever good enough for this guy. Nothing. It's it's like it's kind of like my mother. The wrong kind of person to be put into a power position. Correct. He was probably miserable with his own life and himself. Whatever. So nothing anybody ever did was good. You know what I mean? And, uh, I mean, I don't know. Anyway, thank you. Any holidays coming up? Probably Mother's Day, right? Mother's Day? That's no. May. Cinco de Mayo. Yeah, let's not jump ahead. Jump ahead? What's that jump? Well, for tacos and a good Mexican food, I'll jump ahead, man. I like yeah. Cinco, I like Cinco de Mayo. That's in January, no? No, it's in May, fifth of May. Oh yeah, April is here. That's right. Actually, this is. Hey, by golly, this is the our first show of April, 2016, isn't it? How April about? Fool. No, it's not April. Your fool. holiday. It's not April Fool. I nope. know, but there was your holiday. Friday. Fr April Fool. Yeah, but nobody fooled me. 
There you go. Me either. Well, I did get, I did get, uh, now there was an article that, um, uh, there was a few articles that uh, supposedly Elizabeth Warren decided to endorse Bernie Sanders, but Justin Dana Spears says it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's phony. Fake? It's a fake. Oh, no, I saw her on uh, Stephen Colbert. He just doesn't want Bernie to win. He, he was on Stephen Colbert, and so, she said so. So she did endorse him. Hmm. I mean, a woman like Warren, I can't really logically see her endorsing anyone else. And then she sold her book at the end. She was promoting well, that's her book. That's why they go on the shows, no? When they're promoting something. Yeah. Well, the woman taught law at Harvard University. She, she, she. So uh, did uh, Mr. Obama, a constitutional expert. I thought he was a student. Him and his wife. Uh, um, no, uh, he was a prof. Him, I thought they were both students at Harvard. No, he was a professor of constitutional law. Before he became senator of Illinois, he was a professor of constitutional law. And oh, his wife must have been a student of law. His wife went to Harvard too. I don't know what she too. did. I don't know what well, she did. Well, apparently their parents had money. Ugh. I mean, Michelle Obama says her her family struggled uh, to put her through college, but uh, you know, have, uh, being put through an Ivy League that's what it is, basically, right? Harvard. 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 Is yeah. It, is an Ivy League school with very high tuition, correct? Yeah. And so you know you don't struggle. If you struggle, you you, you can't put your kid through an Ivy League school. You, you have yeah, to have struggling money. Struggling is when you take the loan out and you can't pay it back. That's struggling. Yeah, it's like okay. uh, uh, the singer Beyonce was saying that. Uh, her father uh, was um, well-to-do, rather well-to-do, meanwhile he wasn't. You know what? I don't know. People in the spotlight, they just have the need to embellish and exaggerate. Anyway, it's, it's like insecurity, you know, they can't just tell it like it is. Uh, I just want to say, uh, it's the end of the show anyway. And to show greetings to uh, Stephen Santangelo, uh, to uh, Evelyn Pringle, uh, to Kashi of Zirkene, Australia, to Helder Gandra of Indian Clubs, Portugal, to Mr. Zay Ricardo, uh, to Sasha Boyle, Anthony Alora, Mick Von Raven. Uh, my near dear friend in Osaka, Japan, Miho, Miho. Um, let's see, is there any muckety mucks I have forgotten? Uh, Jean Luc Odon, Jean Luc. Uh, Glenn Bean of Wisconsin, your primary is coming up, Mr. Glenn Bean. Uh, Mr. Bean. Ah, yes, Mr. Uh, one of my finest, most outstanding administrators of the political mm -hmm. group, uh, Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth, Mr. Paul Neef. Mr. Paul Neef. Um,. Let's see, um, any other muckety mucks? Any other muckety mucks? Mm. I can't think of any more muckety mucks. Mm. I think I covered a lot of muckety mucks. What do you think? Mm. I give greetings. I give an end of show greetings. It's actually easier to give my greetings at the end of the show than it is at the beginning. Because at the end, we pretty much have had it. We've had, we have nothing else to say. See you next week. You, progressive Warriors Unite on Progressive Discussions. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.